Hello there. It's about time we talk about Zika. You can't talk about Zika without getting into what I call the meat and potatoes. Uh, there's there's a variety of topics to go over, and Dr. Jaden would know all of them. But the ones that I have been assigned are biology, medical science, world history, Spanish, and mathematics. Besides that, let's jump into it. on. I, I couldn't see anything. But without further ado, let's jump into the biology section. The first and only question in the biology section is, how is species variation important for disease-causing microorganisms? And what are the advantages? Well, it's important because, especially to Zika, if you take one form of Zika, and it's spread out throughout the entire population, there's going to be problems caused because for the disease, for the people, it's fine. But for the disease, or uh, specifically a virus for Zika, they're gonna all have the same genetic material and the population's gonna adapt quicker. So the advantage would be that Zika wouldn't be able to affect large numbers uh, without species variation because pretty much everyone would become immune because there's only one form of Zika. And with species variation, Zika is able to leave a greater impact. So yeah. science section is a little bit more lengthy. First of all, the first question is, how was Zika spread throughout history? Well, Zika was first discovered in 1947 within Uganda. From the 1960s to the 1980s, Zika was occasionally found within Africa. The largest outbreak actually happened fairly recently. Uh, in 2015, and it spanned till 2016. Uh, well, Zika isn't considered particularly life-threatening, but the outbreak within 2015 is estimated to cause uh, 1,600 or more babies to have birth defects. The second question is, how is Zika being transmitted from one organism to another? The answer to that is most commonly Zika is spread through mosquitoes, much like uh, West Nile or malaria. But it can also be sexually transmitted, even though the cases of that are uh, not as high. But they're not as low as the following. Uh, being spread via blood. So let's say you get a cut on your hand and your friend also has a cut on their hand and you go to give them a high five and your cut is still bleeding, of course. And let's say your blood comes in contact with theirs. Well then, if they have Zika, you have something called a problem, <laughs> and you're likely going to get Zika. It's 
very oddly specific in if you have different blood types and it's going to be a problem anyways but it's still an example but more often this is going to happen because of blood transfusions so let's say within the rare case of blood isn't tested when it's uh, donated if it's transfused to another person without being tested there is a chance that that person uh, that did the blood donation has Zika. Therefore, they are going to transfer Zika to the other person. So yeah. The third question is, how does Zika affect bias systems? And uh, this falls in line with sexual transmission. But if a pregnant woman Let's say they go to Africa and get bit by a mosquito, and they have Zika. It can be transmitted to their baby, and this could cause underlying problems, such as birth defects. Uh, Zika also contributes to the Guillain-Barr syndrome, which is basically when the immune system damages a uh, your nerve cells leading to muscle weakness and sometimes paralysis so it's kind of serious um, the next question is has Zika changed over time in what ways has it been more difficult to treat or prevent well there's limited ways in which Zika has changed over time but when it was first identified it only caused I mean, just, just a basic illness, just mild illness, but now it's uh, not, now it can basically deteriorate your nervous system and cause birth defects. So yeah, it's, it's, it's evolved a decent amount, and it, it's also evolved to the point that at the beginning, uh, there was no transmission through sexual intercourse, but now that's the thing. So it makes the virus more difficult to prevent. All right. Next slide is uh, two examples of how modern technology has prevented or treated Zika. When no specific treatment exists for Zika, there are recommendations if you go to a doctor and you have Zika. They're probably gonna tell you like a lot of illnesses to get some rest, drink some fluids, and have medications. Uh, one medication would be uh, acetaminophen, uh, which, which is commonly known as Tylenol. You don't even need a prescription really to get Tylenol, so there really isn't that much of treatment. So it's, it's going to be very difficult to treat Zika, even though it's not life-threatening. But this would, the Tylenol uh, would relieve joint pains and fevers. The final slide for medical science is habits that may lead to obtaining Zika. Well, sexual intercourse with someone who has Zika can lead to this. Uh, let's say you're going on a hike there's lots of bugs on a hike and you don't bring mosquito repellent such as off no this is not a sponsorship but if if you come in contact with a mosquito with zika and you're, you're not putting on mosquito repellent then you're probably going to get zika Uh, so, or finally, of course, being an offspring of a mother who just so happens to have Zika, and etc. Okay. Let's get to world history, shall we? Uh, question for world history. There's only one this time, again. Just, uh, the last section was fairly lengthy um 
So lost pass to limit the spread of Zika. Both of these laws were passed before Zika happened, or regulations, but they they do contribute to the outbreak of Zika. So, accommodations were provided to pregnant women under the previous PDA, uh, also known as the Pregnant Discrimination Act, which was passed during the Civil Rights Movement to stop discrimination against pregnant women within the workforce. Also accommodations for disabled were provided uh, from the act of the ADA. Um, Americans with Disabilities Act passed in 1990. That's all I could find with my research. The second to last subject has to do with Spanish culture. First question is, what are some cures, remedies, or alternative non-traditional healing process found within Spanish cultures for Zika? Through my research, I didn't find anything to do with Zika in relation to Spanish culture and uh, cures and alternative healing processes, but however, the next question is, could Hispanic lifestyles lead to the spread of Zika within Hispanic slash Latin American countries, why or why not? I didn't, I also didn't find any articles relating to Zika spreading due to Hispanic lifestyles. However, I did find an article based on Latin America being at risk for Zika in the 2015 epidemic. But it doesn't link to lifestyles. Uh, it was just Latin America being warned uh, of what was coming. The final section contributes to mathematics. The question is, over the last 50 years, how many cases of Zika have been found within the United States? Well. As of March 9th, there have been a couple thousand of cases, but before the 2015 epidemic, very rarely was there cases of Zika within the Americas. And like, when there was cases, it would go under the radar for the most part, because it was a relatively obscure disease at the time, so no one really cared. But e even during the epidemic, the United States got the short end of the stick. So there hasn't been really a huge concern within the United States of Zika. Uh, the Zika outbreak, which is mainly Brazil, are our main concern within the United States and across a lot of the world, but especially in the United States. Why is within a different disease right now? Yeah. But we don't talk about that. So yeah, that's about it. Oh, well thank you for watching. My topic consisted of biology, medical science, world history, Spanish culture, and mathematics. Appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed. My slideshow will be linked in the description, including my sources, and happy Halloween. I got past a couple days ago.